All right, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We are so happy to be here with you. I'm Patty. Hi, I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12 Stencils. You can find us at studior12.com. And we are all about DIY painting and um, stencils. But these lives are about your questions. So if you have questions, today we are going to be covering varnishing and how, what, when, why, all the things. Um, so if you have questions that you've wanted answered about varnishing, please go ahead and get them typed in and Carrie and I will do as good a job as we can and yeah, we asked, answer. We had asked yesterday if anybody had any questions and we had already kind of talked about doing a, a lesson on varnishing and then the first two questions we received were about varnishing. So we're like, okay, this is yeah, this, this is, is it. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so if you want to have your hippie noodle kind of blown, um, we're going to give you all the facts about varnishing, um, all the specialty things. So this is going to be worthy of staying around because there's a lot of different reasons and things. I've got um, four... I have seven different mediums and um, seven <laughs> different applicators, and um, I have reasons for things. Mm -hmm. And it's I think that's the thing with varnishing is you want to know the reasons why. So, and then obviously, if you love the content that you see here on Tuesdays, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell to get notified, and um, and then on Facebook, of course, like and share and do all the things. All the things. All the things. Algorithms, man. Yeah. Life's about algorithms. Well, while we're talking about subscribing, um, let me see here real quick. We had someone say that they were having issues with the sound, but it's working on my end. <laughs> so what sound is good. Um, while we're talking about subscribing, let's also talk about on Saturdays mm. on our YouTube channel. We post videos on Saturday morning. So when you are getting up to have your coffee or your tea, you can sit down and watch us have some fun and paint some yeah. fun projects. And last week, we painted, Patty painted, with tile stencils. Tile Here. stencils. Show them So, um, before I show you, um, on our website um, about three years ago, um, we meticulously learned about European sizes, American sizes of all the tiles, so that if you ever wanted a tile stencil that would fit regular tiles that you buy from the big box stores that we would have your size in stock with the right amount of area like whatever that's called we did that and it took us about a year to get that project done because we did them in like 17 sizes <laughs> and it was it was ridiculous but when you watch this video that we did last saturday you will learn how to use a tile stencil mm -hmm. you can use them on your floors you can use them on trays you can use them on tall porch signs you can use them on your backsplash. You can use them in your bathroom. They make mediums that will um, seal the tile so that paint will adhere. And they make sealers so that you can actually remodel your house with a couple of things of paint and sealers. Yeah. It's magic. I've done it before, way back in the day before the mediums were really good. And they are really good now. All right. Who's ready to see? Okay. So this is what we did with a single. Do we have the, st the stencil in here? I know, but it's on my desk. Okay. Somebody want to grab that for me? So we did a tile, edge. a tile stencil, a single stencil, and then we rotated it on the four axes, and then that's what makes it a complete tile shape. Okay. And when you look on our website, we've actually thank you so much. I appreciate it. So this is what I used, and it doesn't it look like it is just like um like flourishes or something. It just looks so pretty in that background. So I love that. And you could play with this in a million ways. Um, this tile stencil can be used over and over. And I really did think in the video I was talking about, I don't think it'll go very far with needing a wash. And actually, because I think we were um, swirling, I don't think that it built up any of the paint on the stencil. So I never did need to wash it after all these repeats. So it was really cool. You guys, this is a worthy watch just to see the background. It was amazing. Well, and we got an interesting comment, and it's something that we talked about here in the office yesterday, is that someone commented and said that they did not expect to want to, to watch it. Be interested. Yeah. They weren't they weren't interested in the lesson when they started it, but by the time Patty finished and they saw the finished product, they were really glad that they watched and Yes. So it's kind of one of those things that you might not think you're going to be interested. You might not 
once you paint a tile anything but the lessons involved in the the yeah. choosing of the colors and there's there's so much there's more so many, than there's just, actually so many lessons yeah. in this that way um i didn't think about that i'm I'm sure I said it in the lesson, but then <laughs> right now I didn't think about it. But um, you guys, um, the, the Saturday lessons are almost always to push you over a new line of knowledge. So they are to educate you, and but we just have to do it. It wouldn't be interesting to take a board and just put like a four tile and then be like, there. It's good to see it in practice mm -hmm. and in in an actual project. So that's why we do projects with them, but you can do anything you want with those techniques. Well, and also we had a couple people, one person said they got that stencil okay. in a grab bag. Oh, cool. And they hadn't used it. And then someone else said, I have that stencil, but didn't know what it was. Huh. And so- Well, it, it looks weird. The, they do, and how do you use yes. them? So that's why we do the videos is to yeah. give you inspiration, show you how to use the things. Yeah. And so what's great about these is um, they can complete a half stencil it can com or tile, if you will. So it can make the whole pattern. And um, it, it's just a really good education. I highly recommend viewing that, um, that video. Yeah. I think it's a really good one for that. I think we have one more announcement before. Well, we have to we show have off 12. my video. Oh! What? My video for this Carrie got weekend, clever. She got clever. I am showing you two different ways to paint with texture paste and color. So a lot of times when we do texture paste, we will do it white and we'll just leave it as is and just add some chunk to it. So this weekend, I use some stripe stencils to do some um, framing and some texture paste. And so we're gonna show you how to add paint two different ways and use mm -hmm. texture paste on your projects. And yeah, what I love about this one is this, where it overlaps over here using the stencil, um, it makes it into like a little pattern in the corner. It is so yeah. like magic. It's and I really talk cool. about that and I how it happened and texture. why it, oh yeah, you can definitely see it. I talked about how it happened, why it happened, and then how to potentially make it not happen yes. if you want an open in the corner. So yeah. we'll talk about so all cool. that in the video. But it's just a different way to add a little... Can I text. talk about this green for a hot second? Yes. Oh, my lanta. So we have the boutique in Gallipolis, Ohio. Um, it's in Southeast Ohio, right on the Ohio River. If you're ever on a road trip, stop in at the boutique. It's boardroom 46. And... But... So we get all of the gift catalogs. We get to go to market. We get to have all of that. This color is everywhere. And yeah. it's the first time. Like, this is a brand new color mm -hmm. in the industry. And it's amazing. Like, if you are somebody that paints to sell and you have a trendier market, we have a less trendy market here in our town. Yes. So we have to be careful of pushing too close to the front. But um, we know that you guys are trendy people, and so we are working with the trends for you guys. Yeah, and the green the green that we saw, we saw it for garden, we saw yeah. it for spring, we saw it for fall, mm -hmm. and we saw it for Christmas. Christmas, so, it was Christmas green. green for yep. Christmas. It was crazy. Yes. We were like, what? That's cute. <laughs> you know, it was really a big deal. Well, and um, someone just commented, I love that color yeah, green. Yeah, same. So, yes. Yeah, and too, the, really the hunter bright. green has been doing its thing for a little while. Mm -hmm. but if you haven't seen that all hunter green um, kitchen, Go to Ikea. It's magic. It is a beautiful thing. Yes. It reminds me of 1980 something, but it's magic. Yeah. yeah. And so we do have one more one announcement. One more announcement. We have released the pre-order for our February yes. 2024 no. project of the month. So you can pre-order that now. And it is going to come with a brand new surface, new embellishments, new stencils, Lots and lots of options, and yeah. we are super excited. You guys, about it's it. a cute surface. It's cute. You, you want this one? Well, like the embellishments. There's a pile of stencil embellishments. It's the coolest thing. You are gonna love, love, love it. And um, so, those of you who have already gotten one of our project of the months, um, it's definitely a value. You're you're getting about fifty percent off. You're getting a very good deal. I'd say thirty to fifty percent off. Um, and then you get it first. Nobody else can buy that stuff until six months from now. So you're getting a, a, it's like a club. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a club. It's a fun club. And you're going to get a video. Patty filmed the video mm -hmm. and we have a finished project. We're not going to show it to you right now, but it is super duper super cute. cute and we're excited yeah. about this one. So you can pre-order. Yeah. You really, can pre-order They're all so now. different. <laughs> 
They've been so cool. They have been all very Yeah, cool. you guys, it's been like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, okay, look at us being all sassy with like things we're coming up with and yeah. stuff. It's, we're trying to make everybody happy. I'm a middle child, so you always have to make people happy. But, um, but this is, this is, this is clever. Kelly said, I have loved them all so far. Each one is over the top. Yay. OTT, baby. We are over the top. And so the pre-order for that will be from now through February 8th. And so they have about a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they will be shipped on February 15th. If you order anything else with your project of the month pre-order, it will be shipped now and then the project of the month will be shipped on February 15th. Yeah, so you can do whatever shopping you need to do and, and then mm -hmm. get them in just two batches. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Are we ready to go? We're ready to go. Let's varnish. Okay. Who wants to talk about varnishing? Um, so I want to start with the why do we want to varnish? Okay. So this is extremely important. Actually, this is a really good example. I'm going to say this one will be number one. Um so if you have a leaner porch sign or you have porch decor, you want to varnish for UV protection. You want to varnish for weather protection. You want to varnish for the dog chewing on the edge of your, it won't keep the dog teeth marks from being on there. I have a new puppy, so everything's getting chewed right now. So, um, but it will prevent um, and maybe the paint scratching straight off. Um, what happens when you varnish is you create a paint sandwich. So. If you seal, paint has sealer in it, so you are sealing when you paint. You put your paint down and then you put your varnish on top. They are meant to permeate each other. And so when they permeate each other, then they are making a stronger sandwich, a stronger bond. So when you have something that's gonna be in the tough elements, then you, you are gonna add protection, weather, scuffing, um, dogs, all the things, UV. So that's a really good reason. More reasons. If you are going to do, say that this is seasonal, okay? So this was in a pile from Boardroom's Boutique and it was on the wall as examples and then seasonally we changed the signs and so we end up with a lot of these that are painted but we just put them in a stack. Well, a lot of times when we're just painting them for samples, we're gonna stick them on the wall with a a command strip and we don't seal them. So this was not sealed. And so if you can see on the overhead, this has got damage from being stuck underneath a bunch of boards and shifted and stuff like that. So that's another reason if you're gonna store something, you want to make sure, sorry, Steve. Um, you wanna make sure that you are protecting things for storage, seasonal decor, um, so when you're going to do Christmas and then you're going to pack it away, I don't want to bubble wrap everything, especially not if I have like a MDF sign. I want to have it protected by the varnish that's on it so it doesn't get damaged. And then it's just got its own little seal coat on there. Okay. And then last one for the Y. Here is a tray. This is our Anyway tray. We call it Anyway because I'm going to tip this out. Anyway, you want to, you can change this for the season. So I can have Cottontail Cottage on there, but I can also have Valentine's Day, and then I can also have Every Day. And then these little flats just store away, and they're super affordable and make great gifts. But if you have a tray surface, you are going to want to, it's like all about protection, right? So you are wanting to varnish this in the most protect, protective way so that when you're grandchild is visiting and you've got this is that we talked about this um two weeks ago or last week that this would be your sick tray and you might have um you know you put your chicken noodle soup and some crackers and a big glass of water and some oj and your medicine on there and put it on the, the um, sofa seat or the whatever and then but now you've got germs all over it and you've got all the things and you want to clean that or the soup spills and you have to clean it up so you want the varnish so that you can clean the thing. So I'm going to show you about that. And that will be, I'll do that on one of these surfaces. And I do have one more and it's kind of in the same line. You've got your tissue box and people are like, oh, give me, ha, 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 you know, doing all of that stuff. You're going to take your cleaner and you're going to be like, shh, 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 and you're going to clean that thing off or your sanitizing wipes or whatever you're gonna want that paint to stand up to that. And if you use the wrong cleaner, anything with alcohol in it, 
it can remove that paint. So the varnish will be a barrier to removing the paint. And then if you do in the future need to re-varnish, you can re-varnish. So if you think you've done damage to it, you can just add another coat after it's all dried and everything. So that's a good thing to know about burnishing as well. Whew, are we done? I think I did all the things. Okay, let's start with, let's start with basics. Okay, so let's start, actually let's start fancy. I'm gonna start with this corner. Okay, so this is a project that we did the other week talking about colors and contrasts and things like that. And then we jazzed it up with some glitter. So if you have a glitter piece, um, you have a couple of things going on. Number one, you have loose cannons here because this stuff, glitter is like, uh, yeah, everybody's groaning in the room. It's, glitter is danger. So you can do a couple of things with this. Number one, if you want to protect yourself from loose glitter, then what you can do is you can take your Krylon 1311. Um, if you're wanting to take notes, we're gonna have these things listed in the down below next week or whatever, right, when we do the, the products. No? Yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I don't think I understand the question. I share the links to them while we're live. Okay, and then cool. They are always in the description of our YouTube video. Okay, thank you. So I don't go back and read our YouTube video descriptions, so, um, because Carrie does. And everybody's sick for a heart because that's a lot of work. That's a ton of work. Okay, so if you want to prevent loose glitter, then what you can do is you can take this outside. This is an outdoor thing because it has aerosol and all that kind of stuff. And you can spray over the top of it. And then that's going to kind of stick everything on there. And then you're not going to have glitter flaking off um, like that. However, if you wanted to say this needed black glitter and I wanted to preserve my surface and my corners and like this would do some of that as well. But maybe I wanted it to have a, like a three coats and all the things finish before I glittered and I didn't want my glitter sealed. What you can do is you're going to take a matte varnish that's satin. This is um, Deco Arts DuraClear Matte Varnish. And so you can take your matte varnish and you can apply it over the surface, allow it to completely dry. And you wouldn't use gloss or satin with this technique, but then you can apply your stencil and you can put your, um, your adhesive for the glitter on and then sprinkle, take the stencil away, sprinkle on your glitter. Um, we have all kinds of glitter videos, so make sure you check those out. Um, but then, you can glitter on top of the matte varnish. And so when I say the matte varnish, that has no shine to it. So other mediums are going to stick to it. If you have something that is a dangerous technique that you're going to try that you don't know how to do, um, that you might want to wipe off but not wreck what was underneath, then I would always do a precursor coat of matte varnish to protect. That's another reason to, to varnish to protect the paint that I've done under it. Maybe you've done a lot of detail. Um, the surface right here would be a good example. Um, there's a really good faux finish going on in the background. Say I was a bad stenciler because I don't have my dome brushes, hint, hint. Um, the dome brushes will help you not bleed under. You're, gonna bleed, you're going to stencil successfully once you start using these brushes. Um, everybody that put it in the chat, that is phenomenal. Like it's a deal changer, deal maker, whatever. Um, but you could put varnish on here and then you could put your stencil on top and then you could wipe it off if you wanted to with ease and just, you know, use a paper towel with water, wipe the stenciling back off, put it back on. That's what I love about stencils. You buy one and you can use it over and over and over and over again forever as long as you take care of it and don't bend it. Stencils don't like to be bent. Okay, so that is the fancy glittering. Now let's go to the fancy foiling. And I'm going to go here. I've got a tissue box and I've got one of these. And so what I would do, this is almost exactly like glitter. So you can see the shine on that. Um, and it's just such a neat technique. Um, didn't you do a foil one? Is it you? I don't remember you or me. We paint so many things around here. It's hard to know, but I just did foil. You did foil. Last okay. Two weekends. Two weeks ago. So, um, so you can watch how to use the foil on Carrie's video. Um, and that's going to be on Studio R12 on YouTube. But on this one, I had shown a technique on how to make a really smooth. I think we wet sanded on this. But um, anyway, so this was foiled. This is the foil without varnish over it. And then this is the foil with it. And you can see little pockets of bright, but it's kind of dull. Okay, so varnishing, I did a matte varnish. 
But so putting a finish over the top of this is going to make the foil duller. So what you would do is the same as the glitter, is you're going to get to this level and you're going to give yourself a coat of matte varnish. You will not use the waxes. If you use a wax, nothing will stick on top of it. And I do have, um, I know it's been on video. I don't know if there's a dedicated video to it, but there are videos that talk about how you can remove the wax to varnish or paint over your project. Um, there's so many. We have, I think, over 400 videos of that. Yeah. How many? Or over 400. Yeah. I've heard the number last week, but anyway, so what I would do with this is I would get it to, I did this cute polka dot background, did this little black technique, and then I would remove my stencil. I would varnish it with two coats of matte. I always, two coats is always better than one. Um, one coat, you get there almost. Eh, two coats is way better. I like three best. Then after you're dry, totally dry, then you can lay your stencil back on top. You can put your, your adhesive for the foil on there, and then you can put your, your leafing on there and not have the leafing um, burnished. All the things. Okay, so now those are the fancy things. Let's talk about how we are going to finish these. So the finish that you get, like if you're on a piece of furniture, you're going to want one kind of finishing um, and if you're on a sign, you're going to want a different kind. On signs, my personal preference is always matte varnish. Um, I used to do satin all the time. We were in a different generation of painting at that time. And satin, I might use satin for um, the baby um, high chair that I find at a garage sale or whatever. And then after you did that, I would always use food grade on the tray because babies eat everything. So you want food grade barrier on your stuff. But um, so in this case, if it's hanging on my wall, if it's hanging outside or doing any of that, then it is going to be your matte varnish. So we're gonna get out some matte and I'm gonna show you a couple ways to apply it. So um, I'm gonna get out my fake glove. So I use full top sandwich bags all the time for fake gloves. So I can just slip one of these on my hand and now I have the ability to like have a glove, if you will. So I'm gonna move my water up here. And so I'm going to get, I don't need my fake glove for this part, I'm gonna get into the water and I'm gonna squeeze my sponge wet. If you pre-dampen your applicator, we're gonna call this part unusual applicators. Um, so if you pre-wet your applicator, um, then it will most of the time make your varnish flow better. Sometimes varnishes can dry really fast. If you live in Arizona or any of those really hot, dry climates, um, that can be a really hard thing to control because if your varnish dries too quickly, you can get streaks. And if you get streaks, then it makes the painting look like crap. So um, we don't like those. So a little bit of dampening can do a thing. You could also use a very fine mist and you could give it a couple sprays and then start varnishing. And I wanna know how many hippie noodles are being blown because I just sprayed before I varnished. I think that's a, such a cool technique. Okay, so now it's just gliding. There's no pull. It is just absolutely going on there. Now it, ah ha ha, LOL, tricks on me. This has been waxed. So we're gonna have the wax lesson right now and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So it was beating up because it's been waxed. So what you do, if you want your wax to be removed, is you're gonna use a degreaser and you're going to give it up. Oh, this is a new bottle. Gonna give it a little spritz and let it sit for a minute. And then you're going to let it um, kind of eat through that grease, which is the wax. And then I'm gonna get my little fake glove back on. That's funny. Um, generally speaking, like this one's been varnished. I don't even think I gave this one the hand test. So. If I feel this one, listen to the sound. If I do this one, this one has not been burnished. It's got like way more rough sound. So now we're gonna pull this off. And then I would get a damp towel to pull the rest of that medium. You don't wanna have pre degreaser on, sitting on your surface. 
when you are um, trying to put varnish on. Do we have any questions? Uh, we have a ton of questions. Eek! Mm -hmm. um, Eek! Janice asked, I have a porch leaner that is, uh, actually we're going to not do that when I asked her follow-up question. Okay. Um, so one of the things that has popped up a few times is the words varnish and seal. Mm -hmm. Are they used interchangeably? You can you can seal with a varnish. Um, so how in my brain, how mm -hmm. I work it is I have understood that sealing happens before you paint and varnishing yes. happens after. Yes. And that is typically when we say those words, mm -hmm. we say seal is yes. a prep and varnish is a finish. Yes, agreed. Um, you can use a varnish as a sealer. I have done it a million times. Like, I don't know if it's been a million, I don't know how many things. Maybe I've done it a hundred thousand times. Um, so a lot. If I want something to seal, Stick to something that doesn't want to be stuck to, excuse me, um, then I'm going to go find something that is called a sealer um, intentionally. This is a multi-purpose sealer. This is magic stuff. This is amazing. They make a paint adhesion medium that can go on tin. Like sometimes you need something, it's like sealing and priming are the same thing. So sometimes you need a primer, sometimes you need a sealer. And this works as a sealer, this works as a sealer, but this also works as a primer. So there's another whole vocabulary word right there. This is a lot of information, um, but it's, this is good stuff, guys, because this gives you basic, like this is the stuff that I've learned over the years. So now I can go with my little fake glove here and I've got my damp sponge and it's still kind of a little bit wet and now I'm not getting any of the beading up. Okay, so that is fantastic, a great thing to know about. That little oval, that round sea sponge, this little guy, magic. You guys, you need that in your life. I think it's $1.50. I don't know. It's not very expensive. It's really, really affordable. Um, what did I want to do? Oh, I wanted to do paper towel. So you can also, this is like the hand, hand operated one. So I can go in with my shop towel. Um, you really don't want to use the bounty towels. You could but you wanna make sure that you're not doing it aggressively so you don't get a lot of um, like lint on your project. You could use an old t-shirt that you have chopped up, you know, and let's get that squeezed out. So now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I did with the sea sponge. And I'm just gonna kind of get rid of my sharp edges. I don't like corners when I'm doing something like this. So I kind of wrap it into a little, little ball. And so that's my shape. And now I can go right on top of there. And so you don't need fancy tools to get this done. Like you do not. Um, so that is like such an easy, affordable, throw it in the trash can way to um, get your project varnished. And it's amazing. Okay, so more about applicators and mediums. So we're gonna go to this guy right here. And this is the guy that's going to need some special care because he, I don't know why it's a he, um, but this project is, and I just felt a big blob of something under my surface. If you're painting on double-sided things, you need to get out your Dollar Tree towel. Doesn't matter if it gets things on it because it'll dry and then they won't be there. And you're going to put that down over your surface because now I've had water, I've had varnish, I've had cleaner, Zep cleaner. I've had all kinds of things under and on my table. And so now I don't know what's gonna happen to the back art. So I wanna make sure that I protect the back art. So if you're doing double-sided, protect yourself with a little hand towel. This is, um, I think it's a hand towel, right? It's that size. Um, I don't have the size hand towel in my house. <laughs> Mine are smaller. Okay, so what we wanna do with this is this is the one you're gonna protect from cleaning, food, all of that. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to varnish with a coat of matte varnish. I like matte. I'm gonna get out a fake, fake thing. Well, you know what, let's go into this tool. Okay, so I'm going to roll this this way and I have a sponge roller. I'm gonna need a little bit more. 
Um, this um, matte varnish, anything that you're going to do like on a stepping stone, um, you want to use matte. Um, anything you're going to do outside, use matte just as a rule because the sun reflects off things and you can't see the art when you do it in a shiny surface. So if you have a shiny stepping stone, you can't tell what's on it. And so that's important because you don't want to see a shiny stepping stone. You want to see like butterflies or whatever you're doing. Okay, so we're going to take our roller, no water on the roller, and we're just going to roll. And then I'm going to roll it all, and then I'm going to kind of roll it until it sings to me just a little bit. And I'm going to be quiet for once. And then I'm going to keep rolling. Kind of gets a little squeak. Okay, so I'm going to roll it until it doesn't squeak because it's not going to squeak at me right now because I said so. Um, but what I saw as I kept rolling, generally speaking, if I was using a brush, I would get out of there. But because this is so fast, I was able to go ahead and go back over and over and over and it popped all the little bubbles. So it was really bubbly and now all the bubbles are popped. So um, it's just nice and smooth finish and it's fantastic. And then to store that roller so that I don't dry it and kill it because these rollers can be used for years without throwing them away as long as you keep them clean. I'm gonna get rid of all of the air in this. I'm gonna roll it up nice and tight and that will keep your roller fresh. And so honestly, if I was making tall leaner signs or big pile of trays or a bunch of like paint for sale, um, I would keep a roller like this in here and then I would pop it back on there, roll it in my fresh varnish and apply it, put it back in here, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then in a month or two, throw that darn thing away, get a fresh one. Um, but I wouldn't wash it. I would just go ahead and keep using it and using it. So that's just a really nice... Um, manufacturing systems kind of thing way to keep things quick okay so now we got to get this dry so I'm gonna let this go over here and we're gonna talk about wax okay so waxing is interesting waxing was not in my vernacular for the first 20 years of my 35 years of painting and then I found Clapham's beeswax and Clapham's beeswax, oh, I need a chippy thing. Do we have any chippy things over here? Steve, can you see out there if you see something I've chipped? There's one right behind you. Is there one? Oh. I don't know how it's attached to the wall though. Yeah, we're not gonna pull that one down, but that's an example. That floor with the cracked background is an example of using the wax as a release of the paint. That is so cool. Um, but it's also, this is food safe. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is one of my favorite projects. I think this is just so cool. So in order to get a chipped paint look, I used blobs of the wax underneath and then applied my paint over the top. And then you wipe it or scrape it off and it re releases like it's old fashioned chipped paint. So this is, you can use any kind. You can actually use Vaseline as well, um, not to finish or seal, but you can use Vaseline to do chip paint. But this is heavier than Vaseline and it's lighter than this. So this one works really well. So it's like, you know, having a junker car versus having a really like a Honda. You know, this is the Honda. And then this is, well, this is going to be, I don't know, maybe this will be a Kia. I don't know. <laughs> I think my analogy is losing its, its weight. So for finishing, you're gonna go in here and you're just gonna take a little bit of the wax and you're just gonna go right over the top of your varnish or of your paint. Either one is fine. Um, waxing is actually one of the strongest, hardest finishes that you can do once it's cured. Um, I think it takes about a week. Um, it seems to me that's the number that's coming into my head. About a week to finish or to, to cure. And after you're done, you can take the back side and you can buff that so it's nice and um, not, not um, 
not thick, not streaky, any of that kind of stuff. So you can totally buff that out. This is such a useful tool. Also, remember the baby stuff. Anytime you're going to make a handmade baby toy, um, high chair, do any of that kind of stuff, then this is food safe. This is also good for salad bowls. It's actually um, Clappin's salad bowl wax. So that's what it's actually called. So if you have a wood salad bowl, this is a really excellent natural product and it's amazing. Okay, so next we're gonna go to our other two waxes. And mm, this one is not shut. So notice once again that we have one of those sponges in there. They're magic. You're gonna use them for everything. So this is special dark wax. And I love this wax because it does just a subtle thing. I think I'm gonna put it on here so you can actually see. So we keep this in here because this is a um, petroleum-based product. You wanna use this in a well-ventilated area and don't put it in your car and leave it there for a week because your car will smell like this for a little bit. So we're gonna just rub that in. And so that picks up some of that wax. And so say you have a project that you wish was a little bit less white, light, had some antiquing on the edge, that kind of thing. So this is gonna add just a little bit. You could add it to your edges. You can put it on, it's gonna show every scuff you have too, which is great when you're distressing. So fabulous. But in this case, it's showing, remember this was the example of it got stored and then it got chipped and rubbed. So this is, gonna show everything that's wrong with it. But see how it knocks down the color. That's what's magic about this is you can use it when you need um, it. No, that would not look good on there at all. Um, I can think of a million examples, but they're just not sitting in this room. But anytime you had something that needed just a little warming, this is the wax that I would use, and that's the Min Wax um, Finishing Paste Wax in the Special Dark. It can be hard to find. You might have to order it online, and we do have um, things that we have that are only Amazon, um, we have links for those as well. So that's the special dark. And now let's go into the natural wax. I think I need my opener for that one. Okay, so pop that. Well, I didn't need that opener. Okay, so we have a sponge sitting in there. These sponges have been in this wax for, and this is like what it looks like. You can see it's not quite, is it easier up here? Okay. So you can see there's a gap and all of that, but it doesn't seem to impact anything. So so this just gets rubbed on that sponge. The sponge stays malleable and pliable and all of that. And then you do the same with this. And then this is the wax that we use at Boardroom when we're doing our stencil workshops. Um, we totally use this and that's the finish that we put on them because it feels so good. There is a loveliness to having a wax finish. So if it were me, I would totally go matte varnish. And if it was going to be something that people touch, I would absolutely put a coat of wax on the out on the top of that. Questions? We have several if you want to take yeah. a break and answer them. Um, I need to breathe. Janice Turner said she had painted a porch sign that and the surface is now cracked. Hmm. Did she not seal it correctly? Um, so if I'm looking at this board right here, I see a little defect here. These are natural boards. It's lumber that's been sitting out. Um, if you've ever or never been to a lumber mill, sometimes they cover the wood and sometimes they do not. It depends on how expensive the wood is, but they, you know, if you drive by Home Depot, Lowe's, all that kind of stuff, they've got their lumber sitting out in a covered but not sided um, barn, if you will, on the, on the side of the building. And if you get that driving rain coming in and you get the weather and you get the things and the sun, it's just going to affect your board. And sometimes you don't know when it's going to give up, you know. Humidity, it's very climate dependent. Yeah, it really is. So just... Pick good boards, like look at them, have your lumber expert help you when you go to the store. Um, I like to go, honestly, to our small stores for lumber because the people that work there have to be a little bit more expert than maybe in a big box store because that might be um, less trained individuals. So get help getting your board identified as a good one and then seal the snot out of it and then paint it and then varnish 
the, the snot out of it. And then, yeah, anything that's going to be in the weather, seal it, paint it, varnish, varnish, varnish. Um, Linda said I had a white background with red letters. Mm. The DuraClear varnish picked up the red color and changed the color of the white paint. It had dried two days prior, and she was using the same paint we use. <sighs> Okay, so I have not had that experience and we use number 18 a lot. Um, I would say, if, it, if I was guessing and I'm just spitballing, you know, like I'm, I don't know what circumstances this is. Um, it's possible, a couple of things. Okay, so when you have a bottle of paint, I'm gonna get number 18 out here just because I can. Um, so red color and maybe the red color, maybe it's, Christmas time and you haven't used red since last Christmas time. So sometimes the shaking up of your bottle of paint, because what happens is the stuff that is going to stick to the paint, like the sealer and the medium is going to be down here at the bottom, you know, so sometimes you've got to shake it to get it integrated back into your bottle. So if you have something like, I don't use pinks rarely. Um, and so if I have a pink bottle of paint, I'm going to be like, five minutes, three minutes, something like that. I'm just going to give it a whopping shake. So get it really shook up because if it doesn't have that sealer mixed in, it might be just the pigments that are moving around. So that seems like a, a plausible possibility. Um, also then waiting until the paint is cured before you varnish. Um, and then if you feel like red and white, red on a stencil, um, can smear if you put white over it. Um, that I had a customer and she was insisting and I was arguing with her. I didn't really argue, but I was just like, that's not true. Yeah. And darned if she wasn't stinking right. And so we know now that if we use a stencil with red and we wanna use white, we're gonna take that stencil. And by the way, we have um, a how to clean your stencil video. So you can go watch that and see how we clean our stencils. But so we would go wash the red off and then get the white on it afterwards. So that's the thing to do. But if you wanted insurance, an insurance policy, then what you could do if you have red paint and you're going to do white and you've heard the red and white story, then you could do a mist of matte varnish. And then once that's dried, then you can go back over and you shouldn't have that problem at all. And then how to fix that. So if you own the stencil still... Um, this is the neat thing about stencils. Um, this project took, I think, was it 50 minutes that we were painting on it? So there's a lot of repeats and stuff. Um, the project, I think it ended up like 28 minutes, something like that, once he edited. Um, but it didn't take that long to paint. I own those stencils still. So what I could do is I could go back over with my white roller and I could rewhite it. And, or I think it was red and then white, right? So I could red roller and then I could re-red it and then let it dry and then re-stencil back over using this spray and shaking the bottle of paint, whichever bottle needed to be shaken. So those, that's what I got. Okay. Um, Kelly asked, would you matte varnish after applying a decoupage sheet before stenciling as well? So decoupage is interesting. Generally speaking, you're going to use decoupage medium to put the, the, the papers on. So that's going to be, that's going to be your glue. And so that's going to be your varnish okay. generally. You can use Krylon. Krylon works really well with a lot of mediums. Um, I've been using Krylon for at least 30 years. So it's, it's a long, long, long time. And I, I've not run into an issue with it ever. Okay. Um, Donna asked, you, you put a little bit of water on the sponge mm -hmm. before you, does the water dilute the sponge, dilute the varnish when you use it with a sponge? I think it's acting more as a lubricant because I'm really squeezing out that water. Um, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the sponge between two paper towels and put it in between and then step on it so that I don't have too much. So it's really being just a lubricant and an anti-drying medium. There's not enough on there to mix with it. Okay. And then, it, yeah. So her next question was a follow-up. Okay, follow-up so question. So you did put water on the sponge, mm -hmm. but you did not put water on the roller. Yeah, so the roller, um, because it's so fast and speedy, I mean, you saw how that went, it's not dragging the medium, it's shoving the medium and just like boo, 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 just moving it back and forth. So 
the roller just is a different, it's a different beast. It, yeah. it just is not the same thing. So Donna asked, you guys, great questions. On my boards, I have always used water-based bar urethane, which doesn't yellow. Why do you recommend varnish overspray urethane? Varnish over spray? Oh, over spray, like over instead of. Okay. So um, yes. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, um, I think there was maybe a missing space. Yeah. There. So um, spray is when you're having reasons. Um, like if you have glitter, you want to use like a spray. If you have, oh, if you sign your pieces and you're really supposed to always, am I doing something weird? Yeah, okay. I was, just, I was about to bring that up. Yeah. If you sign your surfaces and you should always, um, you're going to use a Sharpie or a marker because mm -hmm. using a brush is bad news. Like it, your signature never comes out as good when you can just sign it. Um, you never want to brush varnish because the brush varnish will um, make, it has whatever in it and it takes the alcohol in the pen marker thing and it streaks it. It's terrible. So you give it a mist of your spray that'll seal that down and then you can go forward with your regular varnish and waxes and stuff like that. But so this is temperamental. Generally speaking, we use the brush on varnish for everything mm -hmm. except glitter, textured products yeah. or texture projects, texture paste, and things with embellishments that are going to stand off the project mm, because then point. you're going to have a hard time getting that brush. So can you get on the bunny up there at all? Yep, you okay. can see it. So the bunny butt in the back of the thing. Mm -hmm. So before you glue on the tail, um, you, I'm not going to, this is a whole nother thing. I'm really glad for this question. If I'm doing this project, I don't want to varnish that project before I start gluing it together because the glue impacts or the varnish impacts mm -hmm. the glue and it might not stick. Now you can find some glues that do stick, but um, what I would do with that is not put on my tail and then I would take that glued together and I would take it outside and I would give it a little spray with this thing, um, maybe two or three coats of it, different directions go this way and then this way. And then, then I would get a good sticking glue and put my tail on. So um, that's really nice for 3D surfaces. Really, really nice. Um, I hope I answered that question. Yes. Helen asked, does wax only go on wood? Um, I don't know. Actually, no, no. Oh, I have the best answer for this. Um, so we've been in the wood world now for a really long time. I used to adore painting on tin. And um, one of my... 80 year old teachers that had been in the industry for 60 years had taught everything from the beginning of this technology of painting on things. Um, she was like wax over a tin painted surface will make it not chip. So I think that is such a strong, strong statement. Um, and I have done it forever since on anything tin that I paint. Um, it's nice on the wood because it's, it, the feel of it, but it's nice on the tin because it prevents the paint from chipping off. Okay. Um, do you have more to talk about? I have two applicators. Okay, you talk and I will. So, let's see. I, 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 I. Okay, we're going to go. And, oh, I was waiting for this to dry and then I was. So, the finishing thought on this, and then I'm going to use it for my two applicators is now I've done three coats of my varnish. I've used my roller, so I'm just gonna put it back on the handle. You wanna take the handle off because if the handle is on, then you can't get a good air seal on the baggie. So when this is like this, it's gonna be janky and you're gonna get an okay seal, but this is gonna start hardening. And if you have a hard sponge, including these guys, if this has any of that hard grit on it, it's gonna make streaks in your varnish. So you don't want this on there while you're waiting to use it again, even if it's gonna be in 20 minutes. I say better safe than, than sorry, is that the way? Um, so just take that off and don't, don't do that. So in this case, with this one, uh, it's a sponge. I'm gonna apply a little teeny bit of water. I'm really wringing it. I'm actually pressing it into the sponge applicator. I'm gonna pick up. Doo -doo. Where's Mr. Matt? So satin and gloss varnishes have reasons. If I was doing 
um, a tile anyway tray, and I wanted to have a um, wanted to have like a shiny look to my tiles, so it looked like it was actually Satilo tiles or something like that. Then I would do a gloss varnish, and that would also prevent spills, all of that kind of stuff. Coasters might be a good reason for that. Um, satin and gloss would be good on those. So now in this case, I pre-moistened, and so that's going to give me that glide, that lubricant. So I'm just going to go all the way to middle. Actually, I'm just going to go all the way. If I switch from this applicator to the brush applicator, I'm going to have a different texture. Sometimes you get texture, sometimes you don't. But I want to show you the texture so that you know what to look for and what to do about it. But I want to show this project again in the future so I don't want it to be broken. Okay, so I'm going to take that away. I think I'll go here with this guy. If I also wanted to protect the, the foil, I could also just get myself a little piece of tape. And I could tape. And then, so with your brush, you're generally going to use your brush wet, but you're going to dry it off. Okay, so you're going to pinch dry. And so that's going to take most of that moisture away. Now you might want just a little misty poo of liquid just to have it lubricate, okay? And so you're gonna load your brush, flat, 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 flat. I don't want a wad of paint or varnish on there. And then I'm just going to go across. And then it's not gonna pull, but now I do wanna show you pulling. So, because that's important. I'm actually gonna wipe this back off because I wanna turn it over and I don't want things to happen to that side. Okay, so this side is good. Oh, this guy, he got a little goober. Okay, so when are you gonna get pulling? I'm gonna get a dry brush. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is pick up dry varnish. And pulling happens more on big projects, but if I'm doing this, yeah. I have a really hard time because I've been muscle memorying this stuff forever and I tend to instinctively know that I'm not going to get pulls if I do this or that. But if you have dry stuff and you go back into your dry varnish, it's going to make a little streaky pull thing. You want to stay out of drying varnish. Um, it's not going to pull for me. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if we can see it. If it is. Yeah. So anyway, but you'll know it when you get a little pull. It has, it's a sticky, streaky mess, like I'm trying to think of an analogy, um, like I'm going back through this right now and it's not doing it, so, um, but anyway, it just, it, it makes a little drag marks in your varnish and that is not okay. So um, you don't want those. And I think I've shown all the things. Now, any last questions? Um, Jane asks, what about glass? Oh, glass is interesting. Um, so I am not the glass painter. We, um, I would say Google's gonna be your friend on that one. Um, if I was doing glass, I would use paints that were formulated for glass in the glass family. Um, and they're gonna have a varnish that goes with it. And they're gonna have a primer, prepper, sealer, um, I think with glass deco art. Years and years ago when I was actively doing like every surface, um, you use alcohol to wipe down your glass you use their primer to do the next wipe down and then you start painting on it and then you put a, a, a the final um, seal, not sealer varnish on top of that. So okay. That's a tricky one because it's not my specialty. Okay. Yeah. We have some questions that we will, if we did not get to your question, we will yeah. um, chat about it and answer it yes. offline. Yeah. Carrie does a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Give her all the pats and loves in the world because she chases down, she chases me down and says, wait, I got 10 questions I don't know the answer to. And we'll talk about them. Sometimes we have to brainstorm on, sometimes we yeah. have to do all kinds of shenanigans. We, but we, we try. have gone and tested and painted and sometimes it might take us a couple days yeah. to get back to you because we are testing things out. And sometimes it turns into a video. And it does, yeah. yep. Um, a lot of times it turns into, your questions are so valid. And I love any of the interaction. Like, guys, we read this, we read the comments, we have people helping we have so much to give to you guys so please use this resource um, if you want to know more about painting 
you want to know more about DIY, stenciling, any of it, we will be happy to answer your questions. And I shared the link to our varnishing products. So all of the ones that we offer on studior12.com, the um, applicators and some of the varnishes we have there that you can shop. And if you are watching today on 13024, today's a good day to go shop that collection. Ooh, I think there was a hint in that. <laughs> All right, you guys, we appreciate you so much, and we hope to see you in the next video this Saturday.